We were away about 10 years, living in the big city. <laughs> it was good because we both knew that we wanted to be back out here. The school was actually doing quite good. It was, it was, it, the school was doing actually really well. There was, it was K to 12, and my husband coached volleyball for the high school team, so that was exciting for him. We knew it was coming, and it was gradual. It started with the high school in 2000, which was a huge um, decision to make. We knew all the distances, you know, that were involved for all these children around here, and um, some definitely farther than others, some younger, you know, kindergarten, and you're on the bus for an hour and a half one way. That's, that's a long, long day. My oldest was, was ready to go. He, he didn't have any peers here at the Mayberry School. And when you're in grade six, you know, it, that's a huge part of, of your life is, is, is hanging out with your, your friends. So he was ready to go. But I was worried about my younger son being, being that young. And he needs his sleep and he needs, um, you know, to get to bed on time. And so it was, it, it was yeah, I was worried about that. Was emotional and long and hard. Um, it was very difficult on our family. It was very difficult as a community. My oldest daughter, she had nightmares about it. She had a lot of nightmares about the school closure. She loved the school and she loved her friends here and she was really afraid of change. And I mean, she's trans transitioned very well now. She's got a lot of great friends in seven persons, but every now and then she'll say to me, Mommy, you didn't save our school. <laughs> Why, how come you didn't save our school? And she misses, she still misses the school here. The vote itself took all of 10 seconds, but with this near unanimous decision, the Prairie Rose School Division voted to end decades of proud education. It's an extremely agonizing decision. I, I have an emotional attachment. You know, I walked in the halls when we did the school tour. I see a whole lot of memories and a whole lot of great families. In this part of the prairies, you farm, ranch, or work in oil. For Lisa and her husband, Nevin, it was an easy decision to make. After growing up in the community, they returned to take over the family farm. It's a decision they made 16 years ago, and yet these days is a handicap. With two children, family life has turned upside down when the school in town shut down. It is a continual challenge of overcoming distance. For fuel, for food, for school, a long road awaits. Instead of a two-minute drive to town, the bus is destined for foremost, 75 kilometers away. The long ride every school day has seemingly changed everything, even the food they eat for breakfast. Usually it's a milkshake or yogurt, something that, you know, at least he gets into his stomach and can start his day off. Toast just doesn't, you just, at that early in the morning, you're not that hungry. Boarded up and abandoned, the once vital organ of the community sits idle. For two years, school's been out. On the west side of Many Berries, the Peters family children were accustomed to walking across town to attend class, a short minute or two jaunt. But these days, they're hopping on the yellow wagon for what seems to be an expedition. The trek to school is over an hour, across the vast, wide-open prairie. They are town kids, now packing up books, toys and games to bide their time on the long ride. iPods, DSs. They have an amazing bus driver. I think we probably have the best bus driver in the whole district. <laughs> and he allows them to have pillows and blankets on the bus. So they try to sleep. It's a bumpy ride. But when they're tired enough, like I know my little guy, he'll sleep to school and home from school as well. By the time they get home at 5, they eat supper, they do their bit of homework, they practice their music, and they go to bed. They don't have time to play. They don't have time to just be kids. And that's not fair to them. They need that, that almost that hour break after the bus ride and after school all day and getting up so early you can't just jump into homework or, you know, whatever. And then there's all these extracurricular activities, right, that they don't get home till 
Like when they play volleyball or basketball, it's it's nine or ten o'clock at night. Everywhere we go, we drive. It's 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 45 minutes to Medicine Hat. It's to Foremost. It's just a part of our life. As the home of pencils, chalk, and notebooks closed down, a part of the community passed away. The effects were both subtle and painfully obvious. The curling club can no longer attract enough rinks. It's now used for indoor skating in the winter. There simply are not enough families in town. People are having to move to the city or being forced to move closer to the city because nothing's being supported for rural Alberta anymore. So that's yeah. sad. Well, it's divided everybody up, you know. Um, people don't come here as much anymore, you know. Um, the parents that have become friends together don't visit, you know, they don't see each other around here. And the kids especially, I mean, they don't come around here anymore and they don't see their old friends anymore. You know, it was a really close community for a while. <laughs> whoop, whoop! <laughs> okay, put these things right, away, guys. Come on. <laughs> it's a lonely world for Amy, outside of her husband and two children. Of the small handful of kids left in town, hers job, are the youngest. Guys. Just trace these words and just write them here. This is Sunday. Her son is old enough to attend school, yet his learning is accomplished here, inside these four walls. Okay, you want to write Monday now? It's the first day of the week. Well, I'm homeschooling my son right now. Um, but now he's going to school in the fall, so we got to think about either sending him on the bus, which is a two-hour long bus ride every school day, um, or staying home and teaching him at home, I guess. And this. Oh, wow. That's all the stuff that's in it. That is very cool. I don't know. We really don't know what to do. Her hands buried beneath the soil, the lifestyle choice of calling rural Alberta home is top of mind for Lisa. Since many Berry's school closed, her children have adjusted to their new school in Foremost, but now that school is also on unstable footing. Education funding cuts are striking fear in many parents. For others, it's a case of deja vu. It's like we're reliving what we just went through. It's going to affect my child's education, and I, 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 I'm a firm believer in, in, in we're all equal. Whether I live here in Mittyberry's foremost area, or I live in, in Edmonton or Calgary or you know any part of Alberta, we shall have that for our children, equal education. It's the first class of the day for 10-year-old Ethan. The hour and 15-minute bus ride is over, and it's time to crack the books under the guidance of grade 5 teacher, Mrs. Cowie. Everybody got their textbook now? For some people, we still haven't got some. Just have in, so where, what number are we at? I think certainly it's difficult for them, for sure. I, I have to say that they haven't mentioned it a lot. Um, I do know that my staff is very careful to recognize that students are on the bus. Pending funding cuts are openly discussed among staff and parents. It's a glaring reality. The school is losing kids like a slow leak, and the government of the day is reducing funding across the board, across the province. That's going to be a challenge because we'll have less staff, and uh, unfortunately we have declining enrollment as well. It's usually three or four students a year over, over a period of time, and uh, that adds up. This last spring, dealing with uh, a reduction, a possible reduction of $4 million in stabilization grant, certainly was the most challenging time for Prairie Rose during my five years and possibly uh, the, for the, uh, the entire period of time Prairie Rose has existed. Now this year, uh, you are aware that this division is, is receiving 3.5% less in funding. Top two challenges would be to offer as wide a range of programming as possible for our students, particularly in our very small schools. The second would be multi-graded classrooms. 
we have dedicated teachers that are doing their darn best to uh, offer the quality day-to-day -day instruction to sometimes three grades or more in one classroom. That is a skilled teacher. The last three years have seemed like a decade for this school board. Prairie Rose covers a massive geographical area, over five times the size of Prince Edward Island. Declining enrollments and funding have meant cutting teachers and ultimately schools as well. It's a sad day for Bind Loss. Um, our kids are fourth generation in that school. So it's, it's a big thank you again to Prairie Rose for helping kill another community. If you have to get up and get on the bus at seven and your peers have to get on the bus at eight, you know, you're gonna be tired. And, and like I said, uh, for goodness sakes, I hope they don't have any homework when you have to get home after five. Unfortunately, Manaberries has faced what many rural communities in this country and even globally, you know, have been facing, and that's depopulation. Um, school boards do not look at a school closure uh, without uh, much, much uh, investigation and without expressing much concern. Transportation in rural school division is a real challenge every year. Such a wide area, so few kids. Uh, our transportation department's a very, very busy place uh, all times of the year. We have 100 bus routes. Some of the students are on for up to 90 minutes each way. Some of them have to transfer uh, buses to meet other feeder buses to go into a major community. Parents are very concerned overall about the length of bus rides and of course the safety of their, their children as we are. So we work very hard to make sure there's a safe transportation system and as efficient as possible. But there's no question it is a major challenge. Facing extensive cuts, the division is being creative in their attempt to balance the books. The school year is reduced to slash busing costs. Kindergarten classes are rolled back to half days. Staff positions are terminated. Superintendents even voluntarily take a one-year 25% cut in pay. It was a, a message to our system that everything was on the table. Um, there has to be a way for of our education, the provincial government, to recognize smaller rural divisions with large, large geographic areas. We feel that that's a necessity uh, to ensure that our students uh, get the kind of education they deserve. It really bothers me that any student, any child would have to go on a, on a bus ride anything near an hour. But we do have a fair amount in Prairie Roads. That's just kind of the, the, you know, the facts about rural kids and, and like I said it's not getting better it's getting worse personally I don't think it's ever fair for uh, a teacher to expect even the same thing for a child that has to travel for an hour to get to school and then there's the other one that that's taken 20 minutes to get there you know what about high school or even junior high basketball and all the sports activities and even the plays and, and all that kind of stuff, everything's going to be more difficult for those students. It can't be the same school experience. And so that really bothers me. But what I can do about it, I can't do anything about it right now, so I wish I could. Trustee Kathy Cooper doesn't have to travel far from her home in Etzikam to vent her frustrations. Her next door neighbor is the region's MLA. He also owns one of the only remaining businesses in town a museum that attracts thousands of visitors every year. Just a fan in here, yeah, that just ran uh, across center and then just ran a, ran a blower and blew the air in there that just kept it hot. Yeah, and actually got it hotter than normal. The reason I live in, in Etsycombe, rather than Medicine Hat, even though I travel in there every day to my office, is because this is where my stuff is. Uh, I'm joking when I say that, but it's, it's, it's deeper than that. Uh, this is where I was born and raised. I've lived in, in British Columbia and I've lived in Lethbridge and uh, I've lived in Calgary and uh, my stuff is here because this is where I want to live, yeah. 
As a child, Mitzel grew up with just four other kids in his grade and says he understands the struggles of rural education. His solution is technology. This is the perceived lifeline for rural education, a child receiving quality, professional instruction at home over the Internet. They don't have to be sitting right in front of them. And it's totally interactive. It's as if they're there. It doesn't take uh, our, the, the children and students of our day and age very, very long to uh, be very, very comfortable. And it's as if they are there so that they do have that opportunity to be able to... Uh, to uh, get the same type of teaching, knowledge, training that they would as if they were in that school in a large city actually sitting down in front of them there. We are definitely heading down that road to see what it actually could, what would be possible, what it would look like. And this is not 20 years we're talking but we're talking as early as next year of, of looking at uh, changes and creating a new vision in Prairie Rose for how that could be delivered. The vision has its pitfalls. Many families want their children to be in a physical school building and receive instruction and help up close and personally, not through a webcam and monitor. Even if parents jump on board, school administrators already perceive logistic problems. Learning through live video conferencing would benefit the students living in the most remote locations, and yet reliable high-speed internet is non-existent in the majority of those areas. The traditional classroom has been around for some time. It's going to be here for some time longer. But in the case of rural, we have to look and we have to adapt. Geography is about places, about people. And about At the end of the day, though, a system perspective has to be kept. And sometimes the resources are simply not available to uh, keep those schools open. I absolutely love this community. I have fought moving from here <laughs> for the last two years. Ah. <laughs> and, you know, with my little guy coming up into grade one, having to do five full days at the bus ride he is on right now, I, I just know he can't do it. So we are going to, to move. Mm -hmm. We have to move. I, I feel like we're fortunate in that we can. We have the, the opportunity to be able to move. Some of these people who are on farms, family farms that have been here for a hundred years, they can't just up and leave. That's their life, that's their livelihood. You know, my husband works oil fields, so we can pretty much move wherever we want to go. But some of these people, they can't. And those are the people that I really feel for. For Amy, her family may follow suit. The lengthy journey to the nearest school is too daunting of a voyage. We're kind of we're really iffy on the bus ride. We really are. We really don't want to send them on the bus. Um, it's been a, a pending question for a long time. I mean, you know, the roads aren't very good in the winter time since the school closed. We want to go somewhere where our kids can, you know, be closer to a school. That would be our main reason why we would move is because the school closed. People want to live out in ranch and farm and stuff like that. So there's privileges about it in lots of ways. And, then, and those people who live there just know that they have to, um, in order to have that privilege, they have to struggle in other areas. And that's, it's just a fact. I wouldn't want to move if I lived on a ranch. I'd want to stay there. So, so then your kids have to decide. Houses out here were cheap before the school closed. With the school gone, I don't think we'll sell it. So it'll be our summer home, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Vacation spot. <laughs> it's just, it's dying. People, because people have, are invested in where their kids are. So people are invested in either foremost or seven persons and, you know, they're busy traveling to those functions and they just don't have the time to spend here anymore. 
it's past tense for our school now, but I worry about other smaller schools. In 20 years, unfortunately, I, I see there may well be some other school closures. That is possible. Some of our grades in, in our schools right now could have eight, nine, ten students in them. When that translates into high school numbers, that will be a real problem for programming. The future in Prairie Rose uh, continues to look, look strong because we believe there will be adjustments made. When you lose your school, I suppose you, you do lose part of your backbone. Uh, I, I don't see rural Alberta being populated again like it was. It's very unfortunate and I didn't realize it was going to happen this quickly, but there's families that have relocated just because they can, they don't have a farm to move. Um, and there's lots of places like lots of properties for sale or are vacant. People have just up and left and it's, it doesn't look good. It's like the education system is forcing me to make choices that I wouldn't necessarily have made if, you know, the circumstances were different. You wouldn't want to move with your family to, to Mini Berries. And, you know, there's a few bachelors or, you know, couples that are snowbirds that spend six months in Arizona or Mexico and then they come back for the summer. So, yeah, I can see Mini Berries being a ghost town and it's very unfortunate. I don't think there will be any, anybody left. There won't be anybody left out here. And why is that? Because there's no school, there's nothing holding it together. Everybody who has kids, for the most part, has left already or is planning on leaving. Um, the older generation, you know, they're going to stay out here for as long as they can. I'm thinking ghost town. Yeah. Sad. Very sad.